uh, new edition of Art and Science goes digital. Uh, we've been doing art and science seminars for many years now uh, in different locations, uh, bringing people into the kitchens. This time we're going digital it means that we can bring a lot more of you and share the knowledge. So uh, art and science uh, really it was designed to uh, to uh, combine the uh, culinary creativity, your creativity, uh, and with specialized knowledge, the uh, top of the uh, the end uh, technology. And so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have uh, uh, different seminars, starting with this one, but we're going to have a series of online webinars, each focusing on a different theme. And so the aim is, of course, is to uh, to empower you guys and uh, uh, help you operate more efficiently, profitably, more sustainably, at the highest standards always, uh, and help you in your kitchens uh, you know, across the globe, wherever you are. So, uh, so this first webinar is uh, focusing on innovation. So uh, so learn how to stay ahead of the curve and discover the latest uh, kitchen tech trends for, uh, for a leaner operations. And so to guide us through that, we have uh, a very talented, passionate chef from Italy, Chef uh, Paolo Catenuzzo. And so he will gonna, he's going to be here uh, with us in the studio after his demonstration. So you will have the opportunity to uh, ask questions. So, and you better stay with us to the end, uh, because we're going to give you a little quiz. And uh, by the end of this webinar, you will receive a, a certificate uh, in a form of a digital badge that you can uh, even share in your social media, on your CV, in your LinkedIn account, to really showcase uh, your skills and your, your professional development and, and your dedication to learning, your dedication to your profession. So, uh, so now Paolo is getting ready in the kitchen. And uh, without any further ado, uh, Chef Paolo, it's all yours. Enjoy the show, everyone. Ciao, I'm Chef Paolo Petenuzzo, and I want to welcome you to this Innovation Masterclass. What is innovation for me? Well, I would recognize the concept of innovation in three different ingredients. Number one, technology. Number two, experience. And number three, creativity. A wonderful mix and match of few different things that help us to work leaner, smoother and more attractive. In the next few minutes, I'm going to prepare for you today three different plates plus an extra. Recipe number one, texture game. It's made of a Sicilian prone, a red beetroot jelly, an avocado dip, some crunchy hazelnuts, and lime and sage powder. How do we do it and how do we connect the word innovation into this beautiful recipe? Well, it's behind myself. A mix of a few different technologies represented by different machines where combined together I can recreate in a very smart, easy and super smooth way this beautiful recipe. Come with me. We start from these two appliances combined with this one. What we call cook and chill. An oven Skyline Premium S 6 grid electric. A blast chiller Skyline Chill S 6 grid 2. And our latest technology in the market, our vacuum sealer. Together with this, we are going to create the majority of the preparation of this beautiful recipe. We will start from uh, talking about an overnight cooking process. Actually, a different thing, but close by. After that, we will uh, throw some beautiful Sicilian prawns that are right now into my freezer. And later on, we will do our final parts together with some dynamic prep. But let's get into the first preparation. As I just said, I have done during the night a dehydration cycle, easily recalled by our touch panel. The result, combined with a dedicated dehydration tray, is this. A mix of two different ingredients, number one, fresh sage, number two, lime skins. The juice will be reused later on for another preparation. That I have gently dehydrated at 40 degrees overnight. Ventilation level number one, 
so super smooth and gentle, giving us the chance to maintain color, texture and uh, final fragrance. It's really important to not exaggerate with ventilation for a simple reason, because ventilation dry very, very easy and fast, but at the same time give a bit of bitterness. So the mix and match of the right temperature and the right ventilation brings us to this wonderful result. What I'm going to do right now is to move to the other side of my kitchen and go into our dynamic prep area. I'm going to use another appliance of our beautiful range of Electrolux Professional called Trinity Pro. I'm going to blend these two ingredients, create a sort of snow, a sort of light power that will be needed at the real end for our seasoning on top of our plate. Easily open the lid of my Trinity Pro and add both of the ingredients. So my lime zest and of course my sage. You can already hear the sound of the crunchiness and the perfectly dehydrated ingredients. Easily closed and press the bottom. On top of these, I'm having this part that is helping me out to bring all the ingredients all the way through the bowl. What's next? Well, two different things at the same time. One together with our oven, Skyline Premium S, and the other one with our blast chiller, Skyline Chill S. So, with the blast chiller, we are going to perfectly thaw and bring back to life these beautiful Sicilian prawns. And with our oven, we are going to cook in steam our sous vide fresh red beetroots, seasoned with uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and a bit of uh, fresh honey. I have preheated my cavity at 85 degrees steam, and I'm ready to cook these beautiful red beetroots. Simply opening the door and closing, I will start the process. As you have noticed, I am working in steam, but during the preheating, our cavity is going to generate into the camera just 20% of humidity. This will give us the chance to be more efficient, at the same time save water, and last but not least, being more generous and safety for the user. In our blast chiller, thanks to an application into automatic ambient and special cycle, we are going to recall our fast thawing. I have pre-saved a specific program called Proms that I can easily recall. And just with a start button, I'm going to process my Sicilian Proms. 25 minutes to bring back to life these beautiful ingredients. Thanks to an automatic process, I can guarantee and bring back to fresh a product that would be, generally talking, very, very difficult to obtain. First phase, high ventilation and uh, a high temperature, close to 30 degrees. Second phase, mid temperature, in between 15 and 16 degrees and mid ventilation, level four. And last but not least, the last two to three minutes with a temperature close to three degrees and super low ventilation just to stabilize the product itself. 15 minutes left from both of the appliances, prawns and our red beetroot gel, and we are ready to go to the next prep. This is the result I've obtained by blending our sage and lime zests. As you can see, a beautiful, wonderful, super flavored and perfume powder. And in the same bowl, I'm going to add the next ingredients. But before, let me wear my gloves and my apron. We are ready to go for our avocado dip. 
Super simple, few ingredients. Fresh avocado, garlic, salt, pepper, oil, and some fresh chili. All the ingredients in, and just a quick blend. A generous amount of olive oil, and we are ready to go to blend. If needed, thanks to this uh, hole positioned on top of uh, our appliance, we can easily add any liquid we want. Our dip is ready. Just five seconds before the end of the process and we are ready to showcase you the result of this beautiful thawing. Here we are. This is what we can easily obtain by a wonderful thawing process. And as you can notice over the vibrant color of the product itself, we have zero residuals of water from the thawing. This process, of course, fully automatic using our Skyline Chiles, gives you the possibility to save time 75% less than in a traditional cellar or fridge, to keep all the flavor and the texture at the real end, and last but not least, to work and bring back to life a product as this, in a completely safe environment. The heads and uh, the external part of our prong will go for a few minutes into some hot water that we will uh, reuse later on. And uh, this central part will be perfectly positioned in our plate for the final touch. As soon as uh, this has boiled for a few minutes, so the water is perfectly infused, I'm going to strain the liquid into this bowl and I'm going to use it for the blending of our red beetroot gel, adding uh, a bit of uh, sea perfume in the whole thing. Sous vide will guarantee us the staying of 100% of the perfume of the different ingredients we are going to put in and of course will give us the chance to maintain also color and texture. I start from bringing in my red beetroots. If I want, I can also keep out of these a piece just for later on for some uh, little decoration. For sure, I will add all the liquids obtained by the cooking process. And of course, uh, our flavored water just before the blending. If needed, we can add a bit of extra water or olive oil just to obtain the right result. I simply take off the final part and I bring the whole jar into our blast chiller to chill down. Automatic chilling process. And with a simple press, our equipment will take care of the whole thing. As soon as our avocado dip and our red beetroot gelé will be ready and perfectly chilled down, we can decide to go into a piping bag or into a regular plastic squeezer to go to plate. Now, before getting into the actual plating, I need to do the last two things. Number one, crunchiness and beautiful texture together with some little fresh leaves 
of sage that I'm going to slightly fry into some uh, olive oil and of course uh, some hazelnut that I'm going to crunch up and uh, just uh, crash a bit before serving it and display them on top of the plate. But let's go into these two preps. Finally, all the ingredients are ready and we go to plate. Here we are with our texture game. Sicilian prawn, red beetroot gel, avocado mousse, hazelnut, lime and sage powder. And now let's go into the main course of our innovation masterclass. Of course, being an Italian, I must remain stick to my origins. So I am going to prep some fresh pasta. This plate is called Taste of Italy but actually I am involving a lot of different technologies. In between these different techniques and technologies, I will involve the oven, the blast chiller, some induction, of course, our stand mixer for our pasta production, and much, much more. Let's start from the filling. Baby spinach, olive oil, salt, pepper, and a bit of garlic, all together into a vacuum seal bag, that later on I'm going to 100% vacuum seal it and straight into the oven steam 95 degrees for 20 minutes. Doing this process into a bag, I will keep all the flavor, color, texture, crunchiness and all the beautiful perfumes of our baby spinach and garlic of course, surrounded by our beautiful extra virgin olive oil. Let's go and prep it. As soon as I have completed our preparation, I'm ready to go and vacuum seal it. Super easy. From our menu, I'm going to set a program that is called vacuuming in bag for cooking. I position my bag, close the lid, and the appliance will take care of the whole process by itself. In the meantime, I'm doing this, I want to move to the second part and the second appliance involved in this recipe, our oven. I have done a dehydration cycle combined with a yogurt production. Yeah, a double prep at the same time in the same cavity. 45 degrees for four hours. And I have perfectly partially dehydrated some baby tomatoes together with sugar and salt, 50-50%, a bit of oregano, and just a pinch of olive oil, just to avoid from dehydrating and extracting too much water from the tomato itself. Together with this, a yogurt. So, fresh milk, enzymes, and of course, a bit of black pepper, just to exceed with the acidity that will be our twist on a plate. As soon as I am taking this off, I am ready to reset our appliance in steam, and as I have said before, 95 degrees full steam for 20 minutes. From the menu, I go to manual mode, I select steam, 95 degrees in here, 20 minutes, and I press the start. Just few seconds to go in temperature, and again 
and easy automatic cooking process. Here we are with the bag and uh, we are ready to go. And now let's move to pasta prep. Thanks to the chance of having an appliance where 100% stainless steel, bottom bowl in this way, able to guarantee also great quality and a great making of the dough with small portions, enough power to do it, I'm going super easily to prep my pasta. So starting from the flour, some zero zero flour mixed with some semolina, our egg yolk, a lot. Some fine salt, extra virgin olive oil, and just a bit of water to help the elasticity of the dough. Super easy hook accessory and I'm ready to go. More or less three minutes to get our pasta dough. And what about next? Of course, uh, in a traditional situation, we would have to cover the dough and wait for at least an hour, an hour and a half. But together with our vacuum sealer, we can put our dough into a bag, take off 100% of the air, and shorten up the process from an hour and 30 to 20 minutes. Okay, here we are. Automatic switch off as soon as I open up the lid. And here is the result. Oven is ready, pasta is ready. Let's go and move to the other side of the kitchen. Copy and paste of what we have done a few minutes ago together with the baby spinach. I close the lid and automatically the appliance will suck off all the oxygen, shortening up our resting time from an hour and 30 minutes to 20 minutes. By the way, spinach is ready and of course directly from the oven into the blast chiller to stop the cooking process i absolutely keep the green all the flavor in and i'm ready to go to chill it down We just need a few minutes to get into the right temperature of our baby spinach. Perfectly chilled down and ready to go for our filling. Okay. Let me open up this bag. Let me take off our garlic globe. And let's put it in into our Trinity Pro. Together with the baby spinach, some fresh ricotta, some parmesan cheese, a bit of lime zest, and some black pepper. Using the pulse function, I'm just creating the perfect blend in between the whole ingredients. And I'm ready to go into a piping bag for the filling. Our filling is ready, but before using it, I'm going to chill it down for a couple of minutes just to set the whole thing. And now let's go into my favorite part, the actual making of the pasta. From the front part of our stand mixer, I easily stick in these attachments 
I take off just a small quantity, more or less 60 to 70 grams of uh, fresh pasta that has uh, rest for enough time just to be roll it out super easy. And I go directly into the pasta maker. As you can see, I'm not using any extra flour. And uh, in the next few seconds, I'm going to showcase the twist of the whole process, the shape of our special ravioli. What I need to achieve is a wonderful and super thin layer of fresh pasta. Level six would be enough. As soon as I've done, I lay it on top of my table. I take my filling that we have prepared before and I just go with a long stripe, horizontal wise, with my pasta. As soon as this is done, just easily I go and fold it. Starting from the center, gently moving away all the air off, tip on one side and tip to the other side. As soon as this is done, I move it away from the top and I go back in. And with this, I'm going to cut the part that I'm not going to serve. So just shaping as if it was a wave, I'm going to create this sort of a snake. Opposite side, look at me. With a brush and just a bit of water, I just uh, cover up the whole surface and uh, from one side to the other, I start rolling it up. This is the final result, a sort of flower that will uh, bring us to a different approach of ravioli. Finally, we are all set with our pasta and we are ready to go for the boiling. In the meantime, we are waiting for the pasta cooking. I'm going to focus on the induction zone. On one side, just a bit of butter that I'm going to melt up super gently and bring it to noisette color. And at the same time, some oil, 175 degrees, ready to fry some Jerusalem artichoke. A bit of crunchiness and a bit of twist in our pasta prep. As soon as we have uh, inserted our uh, Jerusalem artichokes uh, gently peeled with a peeler, we start moving it. This will help us to release all the humidity and uh, cook it perfectly to the point. I slightly move down to level one the induction and I keep it stirring till golden brown. Eight minutes have passed and I'm ready to take them off. With a bit of patience, I move them on top of a tray and I'm ready to go straight into our pan with our Bernoisette. Just a couple of minutes covered up with our Bernoisette to give the extra flavor to the whole pasta flour that we have made. And we are ready to go for plating. The yogurt that we have prepped four hours at 45 degrees, just plain seasoned with black pepper. On top of it, our ravioli. A 
some extra yogurt in between the layers, our tomatoes, the skins of our Jerusalem artichoke, and of course, a bit of lime zest on top just to recall the filling that again was made by fresh ricotta, parmesan cheese, lime zest, salt and pepper and of course baby spinach. Some uh, freshly grated parmesan cheese on top and a nice glaze of our bernazette. And now let's go into the sweet part of the menu. I have called this plate drowned. Why? Because actually I'm going to cook in a different way a pear together with a vanilla creme anglais. How do we do it? Well, let's first move into our cook and chill area. As for the other recipes, I have prepared a dehydration cycle together with our pears. So a sort of a variation of our pear itself. This is actually the result of an overnight dehydration cycle where I have just sliced down two millimeter thick some pears and I have just seasoned them with a bit of ice and sugar. 45 degrees ventilation number one and this is the result. Don't forget that together with uh, our specific cycle, we need also to implement the right accessory. So, our dehydration tray. Getting back, we go with our vanilla creme anglais. As we all know, vanilla creme anglais is an important and sometimes difficult preparation. But with some uh, tips and some attention, we can get a wonderful result. Before getting into the mix, I want to move back to our oven. I want to stop the cooking process and launch the next cooking. I'm talking about cooking in steam at 85 degrees for 20 minutes. So from the manual mode, I select steam. I move to 85, 20 minutes. Why 85 degrees and why steam? Well, of course, steam has got a huge and strong penetration into our cooking bags. And of course, 85 degrees is the right temperature for pasteurizing any sauces or any liquid containing egg yolk. Let's go and prepare our mix. For the mix, I would need 50-50 double cream and milk. Then some uh, caster sugar where I have also added a pinch of salt. And of course, our egg yolk that has been uh, positively contaminated with some uh, vanilla beans. A quick whisk of the mix. No worries if you incorporate a bit of air. The vacuum sealer will suck it off afterwards. Nice. We take our cooking bag. Just a quick flip of the edge. And I go in with the mix. Nice. And now Let's go to the vacuum sealer for the sealing of this. As before, from the menu, I select user cycle, I select vacuuming bag for cooking, and just get in. The appliance will do the whole process by itself. 
And here it is the result. So a quick shake of the bag, just to be sure that all the ingredients are perfectly mixed. Temperature has reached, load the oven. Again, 85 degrees, full steam. As you have noticed, as before, the appliance in steam just inject 20% during the preheating, giving you the possibility to open the door with no problem, completely safety, and of course, to guarantee a wonderful cooking process in no time. In the meantime, we are waiting for this. Let's move to the induction zone and let's prepare our sauce. I have given the name drone just because of the fact that I'm going to cook and poach my pears into some red wine. Well, usually if you do it and if you marinate and if you poach the pears regularly in a pan, you would uh, simply add your red wine, add your perfumes and cook it regularly. But in this case, we move to a different level and we are going to cook it sous vide in the oven with steam. How do we do it? First, I'm going to add all the spices and all the perfumes at the beginning. And uh, toss it for a couple of seconds, just to be sure that it starts to smell the, the perfume. In here, you have the mix of uh, star anise, cardamom, a bit of salt, a bit of sugar, and uh, cinnamon. As soon as I start uh, to feel the perfumes of this mix, I'm going to add red wine. I need to boil it just to be sure that all the alcoholic part will uh, evaporate and get out from the mix. And as soon as this will be done, I will move this pan directly into my blast chiller and blast chill it super, super quick. When cold, again into another sous vide bag, together with some peeled pears, and we are going back to the vacuum sealer to do a special cycle, a marinade cycle. The power of this induction zone is going to bring a liter of liquid to boil in less than 15 seconds. After a quick boiling, I'm ready to switch the appliance off and move the liquid into our blast chiller. From the manual mode, a quick chill, and in less than 10 minutes, I will be ready for the next step. Time is over. I'm ready to take uh, my vanilla creme anglais out. As we can notice, the liquid has almost set perfectly well. So I give to the bag an extra shake just to be sure that all the vanilla it's into the whole liquid and it goes directly into the blast chiller. At the same time, I take off the cold liquid for the pear. I reset the oven, this time at 95 degrees full steam for 15 minutes only. And in the meantime, we are waiting for the preheating. We can go and prepare our pears. Another bag. Our pears in. So just uh, peel as they are. All the liquids, again made of uh, red wine, star anise, cardamom, salt, sugar, and cinnamon.
and a bit of butter. Done this. Come with me and we are going to do a special marinade cycle using our vacuum sealer. What I have to do is go back to the main menu, from the user cycle, move to the chef cycle and select marinade in bags. Usually this process takes uh, in between six and eight hours in a refrigerated ambience. In this case, we do the job of six to eight hours in less than seven minutes. And this is the result. Looking into this, I can already see that a huge amount of liquid has penetrated perfectly into our pears. The oven is ready. And we go in. Again, 95 degrees for 15 minutes. Our vanilla sauce is perfectly chilled down. Now, what I'm going to do is open just a little corner, display a bit of this beautiful result into a plastic squeezer ready to plate our dessert. And for the rest, vacuum seal it again, seal it and store in the fridge for 48 hours. The cooking is done and we are ready to take off our pears. What I'm going to do right now is simply open up the bag, save the hot pears for the plating, filter the liquid and let it reduce by half. The liquid is delicious. The right balance in between spiciness, sweet, a bit of uh, red wine on the back, and of course, uh, the beautiful perfume of our pears. In the meantime, I'm waiting for the liquid to reduce. I'm going to slightly caramelize the pear. So, simply moving a couple of pears on a plate. Add a bit of sugar. And with a blowtorch, I'm going to caramelize it. As if it was a kind of a creme brulee. The sauce is ready and we go for the plating. We start with our red wine sauce, our vanilla creme anglais, two pears, our dehydrated pears filet and some edible flower petals. And the plate is done. We are finally arrived at the end of this masterclass. Topic of the day, innovation. A wonderful way to work, leaner, smoother and more attractive, thanks to the mix and match of technology, creativity and experience. But before leaving, as promised, the extra. For the big amount of chefs, but not only, that are in love with coffee, for sure you have been watching to this more or less every single day. Coffee powder leftover. 
What can we do with this? Well, I would give you a nice suggestion. Let's take the leftover coffee powder, bring it to the oven, go overnight dehydration cycle, 70 degrees for more or less 10 to 12 hours. Afterwards, with just some more ingredients like butter, sugar, eggs, or whatever you prefer, you can get to a wonderful result as the one that I have in here. A petit four, perfect for the end of a wonderful meal. So what else? Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Ciao. Of the chat and, uh, and the questions. So I'm going, to, I'm going to answer to the top three that I didn't have the chance to, to go through also because I had thought that it would have been uh, very, very interesting also to share with, uh, with all the participants. So uh, first of all, uh, just a quick spoiler. So as Ragnar just said a few seconds ago, this is just uh, the first uh, live session that we are doing, but actually we have some more. Uh, the next one will be at least the same level. So a um, beautiful mix and match of uh, technology, uh, passion, that is uh, for sure something that we have in common being chefs. And of course, a lot of creativity. Uh, don't forget that creativity is uh, the base of getting into the world of cooking because through the creativity and a lot of interest and a lot of curiosity, we can be really in close contact with technology, the latest trends uh, and a lot more. For what regards the top two, since we have really a couple of minutes to go through, uh, the first question that I got uh, that I want to share with you all uh, is uh, related to the to the pasta. So I'm typing right now, and as soon as I'm typing, I'm also um, saying something more. So for the homemade pasta, as we all know, there are tons of different recipes. I would like to share mine. This is a super high quality version that is made of 100% of uh, egg yolk. So there is no egg whites. For what regard the egg whites, use them for other purposes. For example, in Italy, we love doing sweet things like meringues, but not only. For example, like almond biscuits, almond cookies, and so on. But uh, the uh, egg yolk, in this case, um, change slightly the color and give a bit of extra uh, elasticity to the dough that in Italy we are really not big fan. We like when you bite the dough to have a sort of crunchiness and very firm, very firm bite. So this is the reason why we use just egg yolk. Of course, you need to add a bit of water just to avoid from cracking the pasta itself. So in this case, 900 grams of all-purpose flour, what we call in Italy zero zero flour, 100, 100 grams semolina, 600 grams egg yolk. This is the reason why we call 40 eggs per kilogram of flour. Uh, 30 grams of water and fine salt and a bit of uh, um, extra virgin olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil, as you have seen, will give you the chance to roll the pasta later on without using extra flour. So this becomes also super easy and without having any mess on top of the table. So it, the, those 30 grams of egg oil are a, really a key benefit for, for the whole thing. Uh, the number two that I got is related to the sous vide vanilla creme anglais. So the creme anglais, of course, can be done not only sous vide, but also in a traditional way. So nothing changes if you do it in a traditional way, in a pot or in a microwave. You have, you must uh, achieve 85 degrees for pasteurizing it. So 500 grams fresh whole milk, 500, 500 grams of fresh cream, and uh, 240 egg yolk, 240 sugar. And after that, uh, you can choose uh, whatever you want as a special ingredient. Uh, number three is related to the plastic bag. The, there was a comment that I took and I want to spend uh, 30 seconds on related to the plastic uh, use because it's a super important topic. Yes, 
we have used a lot of bags during the uh, during the live. We have just registered, but actually is uh, is not just plastic. Electrolux professional, together with our uh, latest technology related to sous vide, so vacuum packer, provides and gives you the possibility to have traditional plastic bags or biodegradable plastic bags. So this is a new technology that costs a bit more, of course but avoid completely the plastic use. So in case you are into using sous vide technology, but you want to use a much more profitable in the sense of respect to environment uh, bags, we have an alternative. Biodegradable bags that are able to work from uh, um, the same temperature, so 30, 30 degrees minimum to maximum 100 degrees. So we have also the opportunity to use it without, let's say, melting the plastic. And uh, it's really, really nice. Last but not least, let me share with you all of our, uh, um, let's say, contacts. So if you need any uh, tips and tricks, uh, send me an email. Uh, if you need uh, to follow our uh, continuous uh, recipes and content, uh, uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget to follow the Instagram and Facebook uh, uh, Electrolux Professional um, content and, uh, and, of course, IDs. And uh, in Facebook, we have also our Electrolux Professional Chef Academy. That is really, really nice. So don't forget to su subscribe. And uh, nothing else. I think that I have taken more than the time that I got. Wonderful. Thank you for all your sharing all your passion, Paolo. It's just uh, really fascinating. I can't wait for next episode. So uh, so for uh, for all of you listening, we're going to put the quiz now. Uh, do this quick quiz uh, with us and uh, and uh, we will send you the, uh, the certificate afterwards. Also, just to say what Paolo was mentioning, we, we have a, a, a page, a web page for these uh, episodes so you can go and rewatch it. You can also we're going to put some resources and uh, contact details so you won't miss anything. Uh, all going to be there on the uh, Art and Science uh, Go Digital webpage on, on worldchefs.org. So, uh, so excellent, uh, Paolo. Thank you very much. And again, Paolo, grazie mille. Nicoletta, arriva terci. So uh, special thanks to my team as well, uh, Ayla, Anand, for being there supporting in the back. Uh, and uh, so uh, with that, I just say uh, buon appetito. Thank you very much, Chef. It has been a wonderful pleasure to share this hour.